The Black Forest Haunting The legend of the Black Forest Haunting begins back in 1991, when Steve and Beth Lee purchased the secluded dream home that they've been renting. Before the ink had even dried on the contract, the Lee family began to experience nothing short of what one would describe as a living hell. The couple would hear unexplainable noises while trying to sleep, including chains, loud orchestra music, footsteps, and more. It smelled unbearable chemical-like fumes around the house and saw several flashing lights. After installing an expensive, state-of-the-art security system and draining the family's bank account in order to hire private investigators, the Lees reached out to the television show, Sightings, to see if they could determine a cause of all these spooky occurrences. Upon arriving at the home, Sightings producers, ghost hunters, and mediums were able to determine that there were multiple spirits in this house, all of whom were led by a male ghost who considered the home to be his. During filming, several other weird occurrences happened, including the sightings of different orbs and shadows on film, a camera being violently knocked off its tripod, and strange thumping noises. As if all of this was not scary enough, both Beth Lee and one of the show's crew members were overtaken by a spirit during filming, with the crew member shown violently crying on the ground while complaining of numbness and the feeling of something entering her. Six months later, the show's producer returned to visit the Lees in their Black Forest home, and, with the help of a new psychic, determined that one of the spirits in the home was of a Howard, the son of one of the Lee family friends who had died years prior. The psychic had determined that Howard may have entered through a rift in space-time in an attempt to tell his still-living father that he didn't die of a drug overdose, but by murder. Further investigations also revealed that the closet in the master bedroom appeared to be some sort of vortex to the other side, and that the 100-plus-year-old mirror showed the faces of those using the gateway. Third Bridge Third Bridge, or Ghost Bridge, as it is often referred to, carries County Line Road over the dry bed of the Kiwa Creek. The original story is that of a Native American massacre. And it's said that you can hear drums that get louder and longer as you sit on the bridge. Another story is of a ghost rider that can be seen in the trees or riding along the bridge. The desire to want to see the ghost rider and hear the drums may have very well caused an actual accident on this bridge. In June of 1997, a terrible car crash happened along that bridge. Two cars that were holding 15 teenagers and one child between both vehicles were racing in the night. The first car lost control and smashed into a guardrail. The driver of the second car tried to stop after witnessing the horrific wreck in front of him, but instead hit the gas. They smashed into a nearby tree, and two teens were killed, and the driver of the first car was permanently disabled. Thus, adding another horror story to the third bridge legend. The Ridge Home Asylum the Ridge Home Asylum was operational from 1912 
all the way up until 1991, serving the mentally disabled of all ages. Allegedly, the patients were kept drugged and some were even severely beaten. One staff member was arrested for abusing patients and bragging about it to friends. Even during its operational years, the asylum was believed to be haunted. Patients and staff reported strange noises, apparitions, laughter, children running up and down the halls, and objects moving on their own. Article after article outlined the problems Ridge Home had over the decades that it was open. In the 1940s, there was forced sterilization that was practiced on a regular basis. In the 1950s, one newspaper article quoted an administrator who had said many of the home's adult patients were far too mentally competent to be in the home. But they were there because their families had abandoned them. He blamed poor testing practices and the patient's youth when admitted for the oversight. In the 1970s, parts of the campus were ordered closed because of cracks in the walls and foundations shifting the ground. Fire safety was also deemed inadequate as the buildings were lacking both fire escapes and viable exit paths in case of emergency. At least one member of staff was sent to prison after being convicted of abusing multiple patients and bragging about it. In the 80s, there were reports of residents being neglected due to understaffing and lack of funding for proper staff training. In 1988, a newspaper article reports constant break-ins by sylphreaking teenagers and homeless people looking to get warm. And by 1992, Ridge Home was closed for good and having been abruptly abandoned due to budgeting cuts. The building was still filled with beds, equipment, and toys in the years following its closure. Walls were covered in graffiti tags and asbestos was leaking from torn steam pipes. After the mental institution had closed its doors, many people who broke in to the abandoned asylum have claimed it to see and feel spirits within the walls. Some toys are said to move on their own. And with the equipment and old furnishings that were left behind, it's not hard to imagine that there is still some attachment. But the building was demolished in 2004 and replaced by a super target which is supposedly still haunted by the same spirits that were at the Ridge home. The Stanley Hotel This old hotel was built in the early 1900s by F.O. Stanley, who created the Stanley Steam Engine, a steam-powered horseless carriage the majestic Georgian-style hotel opened in 1909, catering to the rich and the famous. Stanley, who suffered tuberculosis, had been advised not to make any plans beyond six months. The doctors arranged for the couple to stay in a friend's cabin in Estes Park for the summer. Immediately, they fell in love with the area, and F.O.'s health began to dramatically improve. After spending the summer in the cabin, Flora wanted a home like the one she had left in Maine. Their home was built about one half mile west of where the Stanley Hotel would later be built. Today, that house is a private residence. The Stanley Hotel has hosted many famous guests, including the unseekable Molly Brown, John Philip Susan, Theodore Roosevelt, the Emperor and Empress of Japan, and a variety of other Hollywood personalities. 
And of course, the Stanley Hotel also hosted Stephen King, whose experience inspired his book, The Shining. In addition to its regular guests, the, ho the hotel is also said to play host to a number of otherworldly visitors. The most notable is F.O. Stanley himself, who is most often seen in the lobby and in the billiard room, which was his favorite room when he was alive. On one such occasion, he was said to have appeared during a tour group's visit to the billiard room materializing behind a member of the tour. Bartenders at the old hotel also reported having seen F.O. stroll through the bar, disappearing when they tried to cut him off at the kitchen. But not to let out Flora Stanley, who also is said to haunt the hotel, continuing to entertain the guests with her piano playing in the ballroom. Employees and guests have reported hearing music coming from that room, and when they take a peek in there, they can see the piano keys moving. However, as soon as somebody walks across the threshold to investigate further, the music stops, and there's no more movement that can be seen from the piano keys. There are several rooms in the hotel that seem to be particularly haunted. One is room 407, which is said to be occupied by Lord Dunraven who owned the land prior to F.O. Staley. Reportedly, he likes to stand in the corner of the room near the bathroom door. On one account, a witness reported that the light in the corner kept turning on and off. While the light was off, they told the ghost that they knew that he was there and they would only be staying two nights, and if he would please turn the lights back on. The light turned back on, however, later the lights were turned off when they were trying to sleep. Noises were constantly heard from the nearby elevator during the time when the elevator was not in use. At other times, a ghostly face has been reported to be looking out the window of room 407 when the room is not booked. Room 418 gets the most reports of haunting activity, apparently from children's spirits. Cleaning crews report having heard many strange noises coming from that room as well as seeing impressions on the bed when the room has been empty. When guests stay in this room, they often report that they hear children playing in the hallways at night. One couple even checked out of the hotel very early in the morning, complaining about the children in the hallway that were keeping them up. However, there were no children booked in the hotel at that time. There have also been many reports by guests of haunting activities in room 217 and 401. Tour guides tell a story of the ghost, of a small child who has been seen by many people in the staff at various areas of the hotel. Reportedly, Stephen King also saw the child, who was calling out to his nanny on the second floor. Other past employees also report footsteps and apparitions seen throughout the building. So if you're visiting Colorado and need a place to stay, the Stanley is the place for you. The Gates of Hell The tall rusted iron gates let the curious know that they are in the right spot. Though this is not an adventure for the fearful, the Gates of Hell near Riverdale Road in Thornton, Colorado is a place thrill-seekers only dare to visit, in groups. Some even come armed with holy water and Bibles. It's a place where it is rumored to have satanic worshippers, murders, sacrifices, and a lady in white who roams the nearby road, forever searching for her way home. They come to see the buried ruins of the great mansion, the haunted trunk of a tree scarred from fire, and the terrifying dark, musty room hidden underground. 
It's said that the man who built it lost his mind. One night, he set the entire mansion ablaze with his wife and children still asleep inside before he disappeared, never to be held accountable. Muffled screams can be heard echoing against these now crumbling walls that have bared witness to this unspeakable crime. Is the lady in white that walks the road the lost spirit of the woman that died at her husband's hand in this place? Is she still trying to escape the fire or looking for her murdered children? Though people stop and offer her help when they see her on the side of the road, she just silently continues on her path, eyes forward, never turning. The good Samaritan will continue driving down Riverdale Road, only to look in the rearview mirror to see that she is completely gone. This horrible murder was one of the many atrocities that were committed on this cursed land. There are tales of slaves that have been burned and then hung from a tree at the back of the property near the banks of the South Palate River. Today, those burned trees still stand, almost as if a memorial for those who have reportedly died there. It's said that if you sit beneath the tree on a quiet night, you can hear it creaking in the wind. Is it the sound of the victims as they swung from the rope at the end of their lives? Some nights, even moaning can be heard. Maybe it's just the wind. Or maybe it's the sound of the spirits that cannot move on because of their tragic and sudden death. It's also said that the mansion's builder, prior to slaughtering his entire family, would conjure spirits and demons. Hidden from sight beneath the ground, he wrote symbols of black magic on the walls and the blood of his victims, trying to access powers from an unseen world. As one would walk down the steps into the darkness, the dampness fills the lungs, making it hard to breathe. and. Flashlights can only illuminate small portions of the dark. There's a sense that something waits in every corner, only to scurry away just before the light sweeps across it. It's believed that the markings on these walls entrap something. A demon, some say. Is that what you can hear breathing? Hopefully those that visit this unholy place don't accidentally allow it to escape, or maybe even follow them home. I know these weren't exactly urban legends, they were more of like state-specific hauntings, but I couldn't really find anything for... Colorado. I looked really hard. I looked like all week and I could only find like haunting type things, but I picked really interesting ones, I think. My favorite obviously is the one with the Stanley Hotel because like The Shining. Come on now. It's a fucking classic. Uh, let's see. Question. Are you ghouls enjoying the um urban legend state stories? Let me know. And I'm thinking very seriously about opening a P.O. box. As well as starting a little family vlog. Just because I've always wanted to have a family vlog. And I don't know if I want to do it or not. I mean, it kind of seems like the right time considering YouTube's all like fucking family friendly. But it's going to be really hard for me to not curse and also to wake up early enough to do my makeup if you saw my twitter <laughs> but anyway ghouls as always my last video is on the top left my next video will be on the bottom left all my social medias on the screen as well as in the description box below and remember there's always someone or something watching you